Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today is a new day. Thank you, Lord, for a new day. Amen. It's mercy and grace upon all. Thank you for your mercy. Renew every morning. And that grace, Father. Thank you for your grace. We receive it. We embrace it, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Our Lord Jesus always is teaching. Amen. Always he's teaching. And he talks his disciples every day. And he continues teaching us through the Holy Spirit and the written word. Pay attention to what the Lord is saying to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark chapter 11. Hallelujah. Let's start in verse 20. Mark 11 verse 20. Hallelujah. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dry up from the roots. Remember, Jesus caused the fig tree before, right? They came back to Jerusalem and they saw it dry up. They were amazed, the disciples, okay? And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you caused has withered away. Amen. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. Mm. We see here Jesus is going to give the disciple a lesson of faith. Amen. Going to teach the disciple about faith. Amen. He said to them, Have faith in God. Hallelujah. In the strong dictionary, the word for faith there in this passage is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. Amen. There is conviction, conviction, confidence, trust, belief, reliance, trustworthiness, and persuasion. Okay? Have faith in God. Conviction, confidence, trust. When, we, when I say have faith in God, I'm trusting Him, right? And that's what Jesus is saying to the disciple. Okay? Jesus was talking about divine faith. Amen? It's, it's more than natural faith. Divine faith. Inward confidence. Amen? From the heart. Hallelujah. Not here in your mind, in your head, in your heart. And why is in, inward confidence? Because it's going to tell them in the next verse. Okay? To have faith in God is to trust and believe in all that he says. Everything God says, you have to believe. That's faith in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Have faith in God. Amen. And we have faith in God in our heart, not in our mind. Okay. That confidence, that inward confidence, that trust. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. They was amazed. They had, look, the fig trees. They withered. And Jesus said, okay. Yeah. You know, Jesus don't start planning. Yes, yeah, answer to them, have faith in God. If you have faith in God, everything is going to happen. With God, all things are possible. Amen? Because you see, Jesus direct them when they ask that question, when they point out about the fig tree being with their up, Jesus showed the way, faith in God. Hallelujah. Let's pass to verse 23. Say, For as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. You see there? Heart, inward confidence, inward trust, faith in God, divine faith. It's in the heart. We talk about this, faith from, from the heart, remember? But believes that those things he said will be done, he will have whatever he says. Amen? Hallelujah. When, when you face and you have faith in God, when you speak, will happen. And when you speak, you don't wonder. It's going to happen or not going to happen. You believe it's going to happen. Amen? Real faith. Have faith in God. For as surely I say to you, so ever say to this mountain, be removed, can be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he said will be done, he will have whatever he says. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pause right there and meditate about this. Because this statement that Jesus is making here, whatever you say, if you speak to the mountain, the mountain will be removed. Amen. He says, for as surely I say to you, okay, it's affirmation right there. Think about it. 
we see, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Whatever. Another scripture says that whatever we ask according to the will of God, we obtain those things. So you pray and you declare something according to the will of God, you're not supposed to have no doubt in your heart, right? And you will receive those things. Divine faith comes from the heart. Are you ready to move some mountain? Are you ready? Money doesn't have any problem, any obstacle that you have in life. You just sometimes we put up with things that we're not supposed to put up. Instead, speak to those things. We talk about it, but we don't speak against those things. We talk about it, we think about it. And the Lord says, speak to the mountain. You see? The difference to talk about it, to speak to that things, command to that thing to be removed from your life. That's faith. Talk about it is not faith. Faith is speak. Faith declared, and more when we know it's the will of God for us. What are we waiting for? How the Holy Spirit is going to work if we're not speaking? We're talking about it. But we have to declare, speak to the mountain, he said. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, for as truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. <laughs> whoever. That's you and me, right? You know, we are believers. Sometimes we like to talk about things, talk and talk and talk and talk, but we don't speak to those things. Look at this happen. Look at this happen. If you keep talking, it's not going to change until you start speaking to it, right? With faith. It's not faith start talking about the thing that already you know is there. It's not faith in that. But when you take your place in Jesus, they play as a song and daughter of God. Amen? Take your authority. And instead of speaking to those things, you will see it. Because Jesus is saying it. And does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he said will be done. He will have whatever he says. Amen? Are we ready? Amen? Say, I'm ready. You see, we have to take that step of faith. Don't start thinking in, in, in your mind, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Jesus Already stated, if you speak to the mountain, if you believe in your heart, what happened? That mountain will, will be removed. You will receive whatever you, you, you want, whatever you desire. Amen? Jesus speaking, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Speak to the mountain. You know, when, when I was meditating this, I, I think in, in, in some things, I really, that's what the, Right there, something came up. I'm being speaking to those things, it's going to happen because I believe there's really one thing. Yeah, I know it's the will of God to speak to that thing. No one that's going to stop me and the will of God for my life and where, where God's already ordained for our life. God's given the authority to us to do it. Amen. Verse 24 We are Mark 11. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe, are you praying in faith? <laughs> and I'm not going to talk about some prayer meeting than being more unbelief prayer than belief prayer of faith. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen? But Jesus is saying, it's what will happen for any child of God. Okay? And and we see here, he said, does not doubt in his, in his heart. Amen? But believe that those things he said will be done. Amen? In your heart. Where you believe? In your heart. And, and, and when I was meditating on this, it came out, you know, when, when I started, you know, working with the Lord, I started working with the Lord. I was talking with a brother there. He was in ministry already, was working with the Lord longer than me. And I asked about something that was... I share with him, he said, yes, Enrique, that's good, please. And it don't come. Had to come from, from your mind. Had to go down to your heart first. And when it's established in your heart, now it's ready to happen. Because the things you sometimes say only in your mind. But it has to be in your heart, established in your heart. Sometimes you hear things from God, or you believe, but it's only in your mind, in your head. But it has to be established in your heart. And, you know, and I sure when those things really was established in my heart, it happened. And that's what Jesus is saying here. You believe in your heart. Don't let your mind steal something from you. 
they already belong to you. And your heart. Believe in your heart. It will happen because Jesus is saying, hmm. Jesus repeated in, in, in verse 24, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Some believers, you know, yet they say, I'm praying about this, but they're really not praying. They're saying, I'm praying. You have to really pray and faith. Okay? Pray. Amen? That's the way things happen. Hallelujah. You know, the example of Jesus gave mountain. Mountain is a big thing. <laughs> he gives the example of the mountain. That means anything. He's, he's talking about a mountain. You know, it's a big thing. He's, he's speaking about mountain. Anything you, you speak in faith will be removed. Anything. That's why he went, he went for the biggest things and difficult things in the natural. Right? He raised the bar. You see, if you speak, if you move to a mountain, you can move anything. That's what he's saying. Anything that you speak in faith. Do you believe that? Let's see another example where Jesus used the mountain where he was teaching about faith. Um, let's see another book where we're going, we're going to go to Matthew 17. Amen? Matthew 17. And this, this happened right after Jesus came down from the mountain of transfiguration. Remember the story? You can read the whole story when and your time of meditation and study of the Word of God. Okay? He said, just come down from the mountain of transfiguration. Okay? We're going to pick up this story in verse 14. Amen? Jesus teaching. Jesus was doing it and teaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus was there. That's the way you do it. Right? And that's what the, the place that God's calling us not only to teach, but teach, doing, and teaching. You know, showing it how to do it. That's, that's the time. We are in that time. It doesn't matter where you place in, 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 the, in the kingdom. Okay? We get into this time because you see how the world is, 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 is behaving. <laughs> Lot of unbelief, hatred, and all kind of stuff. Nasty, nasty stuff. You, you know? And God wants us, his children, to show up with faith. Believe in what he said. Believe in what he's telling us to do. And do those things to show the world that the kingdom of God is here. And, and, and he wants to teach the way Jesus taught. He did it and he taught them how to do it. Okay? We, we, we're getting there. We're getting there. No excuse. But we have to believe it. Amen? Not too much talking. We want to talk. We have to do it too. Amen? Don't be so prideful about your revelation and teaching and your good speaking skill. Do it. That's what the word is, is telling us. Do it. That's what they're doing. I want to see it. You're talking about it. I want to see it. And that's what happened here. In this story we're going to read. Amen. Okay. We're in Matthew 17. Very first thing. It's, you know, the word is challenging us. All of us. Okay. It's a challenge for the children of God. To show the kingdom. Jesus demonstrate the kingdom. And he said the kingdom is near you. The kingdom is a ham. He show healed the sick. He cleaned the leper. He raised the dead. And he cast out demons. He did it. That's kingdom power. Kingdom work. Kingdom faith. Kingdom reality. That had to happen in the body of Christ now. Don't part of yourself and your back because... You have some kind of revelation. You claim that you have some kind of revelation, but you're not showing the substance of the kingdom. Stand. That's what the Lord is saying. And don't tell me that I'm not saying it in love. Because I'm saying with all the love that I have. <laughs> you see, you know, Jesus loved his disciples and he was truthful to them. He always speak truth to them, spoke truth to them. And he gave the Holy Spirit to us, the spirit of truth. Right? Okay. Okay. Matthew 17, verse 14. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, talking with the Lord Jesus, the man kneeled to the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus coming down from the mountain of transfiguration. Okay? Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him 
to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Why this man broke his son? Because maybe he heard his disciples was healing, and he brought him to them. And like people, you know, they hear the Bible, you preach the Bible to them, and they bring their seat to the church, to the body of Christ, to the disciple. We are the disciple of Jesus, all of us. Don't say, I'm not a pastor, I'm not evangelist. Don't say, and you are, I'm not, I'm not a teacher, I'm not a prophet. You are the disciples, right? There's somebody going to bring somebody to you, someone to you. You want to call Jesus? You, go, you have to do it because you already say, you speak to the mountain, if you don't down your heart, what happens with that mountain? That mountain is going to remove. There's this mountain right here is the child. You have problems. Demon got that boy. And he brought the man, brought his son to his disciples because he helped. Okay? The man was desperate. They see his son suffer. Hmm. He brought it to Jesus. Verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child, the child, was cured from the very hour. Amen? Right there. Jesus rebuked it, and the child was cured right there. Then the disciple came to Jesus privately <laughs> they, and said, Why could we not cut it out? Why, Jesus? Why he said that? Because they did it before. He said, now, what happened? So Jesus said to them, because of you, I believe. You see, right there. Jesus don't straight out. He told them what was the problem. Unbelief was the problem. I don't know why they had not believed that time. Because they did it before. Okay? But now, they have believed. Jesus continues, for I surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, you see again, mountain, move from here to there, and you will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. That's a quiet statement, right? <laughs> they just, nothing, nothing was impossible, will be impossible for you. Jesus told them plainly what was the problem. The problem was, I'm belief. Amen. He said, don't, don't came to them and say, okay, you're right. No problem. Next time. What he said? You are belief. You are belief. What this? You are belief. What will happen this time? You are belief. Hey, Jesus. Jesus loved his disciples. He don't went to a wrong. I don't want you to hurt your feelings, guy. No, he said, you are belief. I'm not going to tell that because I don't want to hurt their feeling. No, he had to tell the truth. You unbelief because next time what's going to happen if you don't check out the unbelief and you hurt. What's going to happen next time? If we don't speak the truth, it's going to be a time that you're not going to have with you, your prayer partner. It's you. And you have to believe God. You have to have faith in God. You have to trust in God when you speak in faith, you're going to perform. Amen? And that's what Jesus is telling you. are going to stay here. I'm going to go to heaven soon. And you're going to stay here representing the kingdom. You're representing the kingdom. You're representing me and our Father. You have to do these things. Now who is here? Us. And the Holy Spirit with us. The Word of God with us. He has commissioned us. And He's saying, do it. Speak to the mountain. And then, you know, as the list told <laughs> There was unbelief. Then he told them, you know, I want to paraphrase that, and then we read the verse. Then, by the way, this kind of unbelief only go out with what? Let's read the verse, verse 21, with Matthew 17, verse 21. Let's, let's read from 20 to 21 again, okay? So, when the disciple came to Jesus, right? Verse 19, again. Then the disciple came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cut it out? So Jesus said to them, and, they, and you ask Jesus, and you ask 
this problem and you come to him, he's going to tell you the same thing. He's not going to go around. He will tell you the truth. Amen? Because of your unbelief, for actually, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind, this kind of what unbelief does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Out from where? From your heart. Out. That help you. Prayer and fasting will help you to get rid of unbelief from your heart. They're not talking about the demon and, the, and, and that child. He was talking about the, that kind of unbelief. I don't know who brought unbelief to those disciples in that time. Because they did it before. They cast out demons before. But now they faced that situation. And now unbelief came. And that happened to us too. We see God perform miracles in our faces. And then another situation similar or another one can what we do. We get all scared. And belief can come. Nothing happened. We learned what happened. And you know what the Lord said? And belief. I was talking to the Lord like two years ago about situations that were happening in the body of Christ. And the Lord, you know what was the answer? And belief. <laughs> That's what's the answer. I thought the answer was going to be different. You know, like they need to learn more of this, more of that. No, it wasn't. It was unbelief. Unbelief. You see, unbelief. Where was the unbelief? In the heart. And he gave us some tip right there. <laughs> Prayer and fasting help. Not to move God. It's to remove unbelief from your heart. Because God's ready to move all the time when you speak in faith. To remove. You're not moving God. You're removing unbelief. From your heart. Prayer and fasting are going to move God and move you <laughs> out of the way. In this case, move unbelief. Prayer and fasting help. Don't fast to move God because you're not moving God. God already established what He established. And what He says, a yes and amen. Okay? He already established. What He established is established. What He said, He said it. That you're not moving God, you're moving yourself out of the way. Unbelief. Self, that's it. Somebody said, I want to pray and fast to move. I am moving God. Jesus said, however, this kind does not go out set by prayer and fasting. The unbelief. Because he wasn't talking about the demon with Jesus. We said, okay, hold on. I want to go fast for three days and I come back. No, he didn't say, he's right there. He, he rebuked the demon. <laughs> and, he, and the demon went out right there. You see, this man was desperate. He don't have time. To be waiting. He's been seeing his, his kids suffering for many, many years. For a long time. He wanted the solution now. Now is faith. Now is faith. Now. Not tomorrow. Are you getting something? Are you learning something from the master? Jesus. That's the way he taught the disciple. I'm going to do it. I will tell you the way it is. And you ask me what's the problem. I will tell you plainly too. It's unbelief. You know, Jesus, we disciple, he didn't play around. He always told this. When he told, they went, uh, they go in the, in, in the boat and go to the other side, and the storm came. They were afraid. And Jesus, what, you know, Jesus rebuked them. They told them that plainly they, they don't have no faith. Why you doubt? Why you haven't believed? Why you have little faith, you see? Why Jesus told the disciple those words? Because he expected them to do it. He expected the same thing from us. We face things, we face mountain. It's pay us to speak to the mountain. So begging God. We already established something. He wants us to grow. <laughs> Let's go to John 14. We have to start making excuses. If we have belief, let's say it. If you have belief, just do what, what Jesus is saying to do. You need fasting and prayer, fast and pray. Whatever it takes, but we have to do the work. We are the one here in this earth. And the Holy Spirit with us, is with us. Okay? But He's going to move if we speak in faith. Amen? John 14, I'm going to believe God. I believe everything He said. Yeah, I'm not going to make excuses. I'm not doing it. You can make all the excuses you want. I'm not going to do it. John 14, 12. Jesus speaking. He said, Most assuredly, He always was 
when he's talking about answered prayer, he always was, you know, straight, positive about it, right? Affirmative words. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, you see, you believe in Jesus, you believe in God, okay? Remember, he said, I have faith in God. If you believe in me, the works that I do, he will do also. We, we saw the work of Jesus. We, we, the disciples saw it. We know it because we're reading in the Bible, right? What was the work that Jesus did when he was working with the disciples? He healed the sea, cleansed the leper, raised the dead. He do all kinds of miracles, right? He multiplied the bread, the fish. He gave the mighty cash to Peter. He sent Peter to, to get the coins to pay the taxes, right? The work. Talking about work. Most actually, I said to you, he believes in me the works that I do, he will do also. They were supposed to be doing this work. And we believe in Jesus, right? It's in greater works than this he will do because I go to my Father. Many say that, you know, the salvation, because we can reach more people for salvation, that, that's good too. But he expects to do the other work too. What is it? Heal the sea, clean the leper, raise the dead. Yeah, we're getting people saved, presenting the gospel to them, what Jesus did. Yeah, that's one thing. But what about the other work? The other work, the miracles, the signs and wonders. He spread those things too. Heal the sea, clean the leper, raise the dead. We're not going to go there, but when, when this man brought a friend that was paralytic in bed, in bed cannot walk, and Jesus said, you sing and forgive, and the, and the religious people start talking about it. Oh, who, who this guy? Who you think you are? That's what they say. <laughs> the religious people. You're not God to forgive sins. And Jesus said, what is easier? To forgive sin or to heal? And Jesus said, right, so pick up your bed and go. You see, the work is not only what, you know, forgiving the sins, but heal the sick too. And he expects us to do that work too. Amen? You believe that? He came to destroy the work of the devil. We continue in enforcing that authority over the work of the devil, the sin and the sister, lack, and all come the nasty thing. And we are the enforcers with the power of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are to enforce that with the power of God and us. Amen? With the authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's repeat. Read again John 14. 12. Most actually I say to you, who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this he will do. Because I go to my Father. You see, why? Because I go to my Father. Hmm. You see, I'm living, you stay. <laughs> you have to do it. It's plainly. Are you a disciple? Okay. He's talking to you and me, right? I'm going to my father. I'm going, you stay. <laughs> go and do it. Go do the work. We go back in, in verse 10, 11. See, here in verse 8, Philip, you know, asked question Jesus to show the father to them. You see? And Jesus, uh, look at the way Jesus answered to them. John 14, verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father. And it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? You have seen me, has seen the Father. Hmm. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? And the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. <laughs> you see? That's the way. I show you the Father. The word I speak, and I come from my own authority, come from God. And the works too. The Father is doing the work in me. All those words you see, heal the sick, clean the leper, raise the dead, the Father in me doing it. I speak, and the Father does. The Holy Spirit, a word to Jesus. The same Holy Spirit is working all when we speak in faith. And the unbeliever, we see the Father working through us. See Jesus working through us. Amen. That's why Jesus, in verse 12, verse 11, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. 
or else believe me for the sake of the words themselves. If you don't believe the thing I spoke to you, believe me for the work. You see, in it? Remember when John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask Jesus what they want that God sent? And John, John the Baptist sent his disciples to Jesus. He said, we are disciples of John the Baptist. He sent us to you. And you are the one. And Jesus said, okay, tell John the sick are here. The leper are cleansed, and the dead are raised. The work. Go tell. But you saw it. Go tell John. <laughs> the sick are healed, the leper are cleansed, and the dead are raised. When they bring the people to the church for healing, they're supposed to get healed. When the unbeliever can knock into our doors, they're supposed to get healed. And you know what happened when they get healed? They go and tell them what a God did for them. That's why the all the story with Jesus, Jesus healed people, they ran around telling everybody. That's why when Jesus passed through town, everybody, all the sick was coming. They brought their sick. The same happened with the Peter. They put it in the street because they heard what they heard about us. What they're hearing about us. The, the unbelievers. Mm. They don't come for our good music, our good building. They have better buildings than us. You go speak, they're not caught it. It's about do the work. It's about show the Father, show Jesus to them. And how we show it? Healing the sick, cleansing the leper, raising the dead. Jesus was teaching to his disciples. When I leave this place, when I leave the earth, I'm going to the Father, you have to do it. Eh? Hallelujah. You better get it. You better believe it. It's time now. It's time. The people of the world, they're not impressed with you. You go speak. Your buildings, no, they're not impressed with, they have all that, okay? They have it. But when the kids get healed by the power of God, you know when it happened, you know what will happen. They bring the stuff to the church. Those stuff that you want, <laughs> are crazy about it. They have too many of those things. They give everything for the kids. But you're not doing for that, right? Mm-hmm. God wants to show his power. He wants to save and heal too. It's our responsibility to believe God. All the believers. Stop putting only in the, in the preachers. Every believer. Stop saying only the, the, the apostle, only, only the, the prophet, only the evangelist, only the teacher. Every believer. Or every disciple. You are a disciple of Jesus. You're supposed to do it too. I, I just work in the office. Yes. What about... If you co worker have a, a sick child, and you're going to take authority in, in Jesus' name, or you're going to say, oh, take it to my church. Maybe they don't want to go to your church. But you have faith in the name of Jesus. You want God, we, we glorify in that time, and you will pray for that child in the name of Jesus, that child will be healed, and God will be glorified. So most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this he will do because I go to my father. I'm leaving, you stay. You have to do it. That's why he's talking about works. And the word he's talking a specific word. Healing. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. You see? Miracles. Wonders. Power. That's why he was talking. The same way that Jesus told the disciples that, that that kind of unbelief go out with prayer and fasting, it's the Lord's house faith come to. And we're going to see in Romans 10, 17, so then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? But he's talking about the God preach the gospel, right? But us as a believer, we have to continue, right? Meditating in the word of God, Right? Starting the word of God, that we get a strong in faith, right? And our unbelief go out. Amen? Second Corinthians 4.13. Second Corinthians 4.13. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, I believed, and therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore, Speak, you see, that's what a faith that when you believe in your heart, what you do, speak those things that you believe. You believe, you speak. 
you believe this, the, the Lord Jesus said, speak to the mountain that we remove. If you believe in your heart, you will speak. Matthew 12, 34. You know, many years ago, I read an article in some country, you know, the unbeliever was mocking the believers, you know, mocking the believers and saying, where did you go? Where are, those miracles that you speak about, I don't see it. Mocking, you know, I, 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 cry, I cry reading the, the article. You know, because the unbeliever challenge the believers. Charles, you know, Charles, where you go? You read that they, they, they you got to do miracles. That you see Jesus did this and that. But we don't see it. The person that wrote the, the article, he was sad about that too. Because he said, you know, where the church are is. We're not doing those things that we're supposed to do. And he said in the article, I don't remember who was, but I know the country. And he said, you know, we're supposed to do this thing that the Lord Jesus did and the Lord Jesus said that we do it, but we're not doing it. And the unbeliever is telling us, and they was mocking them, challenging them. And when I read the article, man, that was many, many years ago. And I cried reading the article. I cried. Because what we're supposed to be is what, what the, this Bible says. We, we're supposed to do what the Bible says we're supposed to be doing. He said, all believers, they're not skilled for no one, for no one. And the man that wrote the, the article, he said, you know, that he has to check himself. Too. He, well, I think he was a teacher. He said, yeah, I'm teaching, but I don't, <laughs> I don't do any, those things. He said, we all have to do the work. The scripture, they're going to read, you know, this scripture. But, but, you know, Jesus said it here in, in a negative way against those people. But you, you see but look at the positive side of this creature too. It's Matthew 12, 34. Brute of vipers. How can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let's see. If you heart full of God, full of the things of God, full of faith, what you speak? Faith, good things. You see? You have to be full of the Spirit, full of God, full of His Word. And from a mouth come word of faith. Word of truth. Do you see that? Do you see that? You know, always the Lord, when we come, He left us without excuse. What we have to do is humble ourselves. Start making excuses. Start being prideful. If we're not doing the work. And all prideful, all path up. Full of ourselves. We're enforcing our authority. John 15, verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. you see? It's teaching us how we, we walk in that confidence and trust and confidence to speak the thing we abide in Him, His word abide in our hearts. When we do that, we, we could ask what we desire, and it shall be done for you and for me. He's telling how we get to that place, right? Man, we're supposed to, to go from glory to glory. We're supposed to go forward, not backward. We're not supposed to be standing either, always moving. James 1, James 1, verse 6. Let's start in verse 6. Amen? Are you really get it? The Lord is speaking to you. James 1, verse 6. Let's start in verse 5. He said, be speaking about if we ask anything to God, right? If we give it to God, if we ask in faith, right? That's what Jesus said, right? Several times, right? In James 1, verse 10, verse 5, 5, he said, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all, who gives to all, listen, who gives to all, all, liberally and without reproach, and will be given to him. You see? Jesus was speaking of anything you ask God in prayer, if you believe you will receive anything. James is talking here about wisdom. Anything from God. You ask God and faith give it to you, even wisdom. He said, but let him ask and faith. You see, that's all God requires. What God requires? Faith when you ask him. Nothing else. Faith. But faith, confidence, trust in him. They're going to do it. They're going to do it for you. Amen. You check yourself. When you're asking God, you're asking Him in faith that God is able to do it. He wants to do it for you. 
Y es estable, you know, es, y you know the will of God will do it for you. Like healing, provisions, anything. You see, it's will. So you can go to God and faith in us. Amen. But in us and faith with, with no doubting. No doubting. No doubting. No doubting. Amen. For he who doubts. And you know, it may be, it, God's not like you, mother or father. Maybe, why are you asking me? You're, like, oh, you're always asking me. No, God's not. God's not like that. You can go all the time to God in faith. He's not going to tell you anything. He said, without reproach, don't compare your father God with you parents here in this earth. They may be reproach you when you ask. God's not like that, okay? We're not doubting for it who doubts and like a wave of the sea driving and tossed by the wind from here to there. Today I believe, tomorrow I don't know. God will do it today. I don't know tomorrow. God's God. He not changed his mind all the time. He said it. It's established. That's it. For let not the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded Man, unstable in all his ways. Hmm. Let's repeat verse 7. For let not, for let not the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Who do not receive from the Lord? Person that has no faith. Person that is full of doubt. Do not receive anything from the Lord. You see, in the kingdom of God, everything by faith and grace. Grace through faith. You see, that's the way of the kingdom. You belong to the kingdom. You need to know and understand the ways of the kingdom. And you belong to the kingdom. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So when you have doubts, you, have, you are double-minded. You've been divided. If you are double-minded, you've been divided inside you. Then your walk of faith becomes unstable. Today, you like the person full of faith, ready to take the devil, ready for tomorrow. You don't know. I don't know if God's with me. I don't know if he's going to burn me up. I don't know. He established, established. You see the word of God. Jesus said, whatever you ask in faith, you will receive. Amen. This is a lesson of faith from our master, Jesus. He's our example. He told his disciples, now we have the Holy Spirit to teach us, to guide us. And the Holy Spirit is with us to move when we speak. Jesus said, my Father does the work. That means the Holy Spirit, when Jesus spoke, the Holy Spirit went and did whatever Jesus spoke. The same authority and power are given to us. Amen? As believers. And the same Holy Spirit living in us, ready to do the work. The same. Remember? Jesus taught the disciple and demonstrated the kingdom. The Holy Spirit is here with us to teach us and to help us and to move with power when we speak in faith. Amen. I pray that your faith arise and ready to do the work and demonstrate that the kingdoms of God is within you. Amen.